Uh, on our little feed, it says showtime. <laughs> showtime. Welcome, everybody. Yes, uh, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is Dean Tenney, uh, a.k.a. the uh, guru, and uh, Brian Lee, a.k.a. the uh, test geek, with our Tuesday Live. So uh, tell us what series exam you're taking and where you're joining us from. And uh, you will have other people in the chat. You will have some folks, uh, victorious test takers, and you're welcome to have some fellowship with them. Uh, once we get rid of the housekeeping, so those of you who are new and joining our Tuesday weekly live stream, we start with a brief on uh, what we've heard from, from victorious test takers, uh, brief and debrief. And then you can confirm that with, you know, people who may pop into the chat. And we end each of our live streams with a drawing for a 30-minute uh, uh, coaching call. So uh, we'll talk about that at length here when we get done with our housekeeping. So let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of this. Now, when Brian and I are trying to answer questions, it would be helpful if during that uh, time frame, I forget the housekeeping done, uh, finished briefing and debriefing, uh, if you tell us what exam you're taking, followed by your question with a capital Q, it makes it easier for me to pick it out of the chat. And it prevents, or I shouldn't say prevent, but it helps us not spend a lot of time trying, oh, what, is this a six? Is this a seven? Because it may be testable on many exams, but the depth that it may be tested at may be different. So if you can help us out, appreciate it. It's not a big deal. And uh, don't hesitate to, if we have victorious test takers popping in, don't hesitate to uh, reach out to them. Uh, you don't have to take Brian. I don't know why people don't want to take Brian's word for things or my word for things as a test taker, but you know, you have an independent third party perhaps in the chat that can verify what we tell you. Okay, so debrief this week. Nothing surprising. I had an SIE test taker. We always tell people there's not a lot of math. Uh, you should be prepared to do current yield on the SIE. On all exams, I think you should be prepared to do current yield. What an investment pays you, by what it costs you. No surprise, forward split. No surprise. I think, you know, in terms of value, maybe you get that. Maybe you don't. This test taker said they did. I trust them. But the point that I always try and make to you on the SIE 65 and 66, that I'm not going to believe you if you tell me math is the reason that you missed your mark. I'm not saying there's not any math. I'm just saying, you know, that wouldn't be material to your success. Do I want you to be able to do the math? I do. The other thing I'd like you to be able to do is tax and tax frequent yields for that. Uh, 65, 66, no surprise here either. Uh, we are expecting people to get questions on time rated return and dollar weighted returns on both the 65 and 66. My job is to open or simplify. I'll defer to uh, Brian if he wants to add to it. I think the test question I see on debrief most often, Brian, is which is appropriate for a mutual fund versus which is appropriate for a separate account that you're managing for like the doctor or the attorney or whoever it happens to be. And time weighted return would be better for a pooled investment like a mutual fund, whereas dollar weighted would uh, reflect dollars in and out. Anything that you want to add to that one, Brian? Uh, the ones I've heard, and I've heard it quite frequently, Okay. Uh, is a basic definition for time weighted return. Okay. Uh, you know, the, uh, the investments themselves and whether they increase or it doesn't decrease. reflect in cash in and out. Exactly. And time weighted and dollar weighted are both answer choices. Okay. There you go. That's so, the one I've heard most often. There you but go. Very often. Yeah. No, I, but we, listen, we're not surprised on some of the debrief we hear, but we want to get you, you know, get, uh, you know, tell you what, what people are saying. Uh, this is odd. I haven't seen this in a, a while. And, you know, we we know it's testable content. But this uh, Series 7 a test taker said she was asked what kind of company would typically issue a equipment trust certificate. And she had a choice like utilities, you know, pharmaceuticals, and she had to come with transportation. Now, I personally would think as a test taker, that would be one that you should hope you get. Right. So this is secured. It's a secured bond. It's senior airlines, you know, maybe railroads. Railroads are usually leasing, but, uh, you know, airlines, railroads, that kind of thing. So, okay. So uh, what's on the test, not on the test? So that's something you can also ask in the chat if you have a, that kind of a question. The best uh, free supplement to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel. And that's organized by the series playlist. So you find your series, SIE, for example, or six, or whatever it happens to be. And then you go to that playlist and that's where you find all the content that's uh, appropriate for your exam. I would think of the channel as a buffet. You know, take what you like, leave what you don't. Now, in terms of paid supplements, in terms of paid supplements, there are two that I highly recommend. 
One is the Kaplan QBank. If you don't already have a Kaplan QBank, I highly recommend it. I recommend the Kaplan course, but if you already have a Kaplan course or Pass Perfect or SDC, you know, I might want to supplement that and the quick sheets. The other paid supplement I highly recommend is Brian Lee, the test geek here joining us. His paid supplements, uh, he gives us 20%, our viewers and subscribers, 20% off on his content, and that's Guru 20. All in for Brian, you get a you video course, you get a, a PDF with a, really some good, good information and a really spot on practice exam. So uh, I think he raised his prices recently, but I think we come in with the discount code about 100 bucks all in. And if you just want the PDF, I might, I think it's like 40, 45 all in, something like that. And then uh, we don't mislead you. If you just want that great practice exam, the, the dead tree version, uh, Brian has given us a permission to put those on the channel and explicate them. And, uh, you know, if you actually want to have a physical version of that, I'm not set up to send you physical versions of things you find on my, my channel. I get that request all the time. Someday. Brian has been kind enough to write a suitability uh, rationale for me. So, you know, we're talking about maybe he'll I'll put it on his channel. <laughs> we can figure it out. But Brian does have that capability. So, you know, for 20 bucks, you can get a dead tree version. I, I highly recommend that as well. If you don't go on, you'll get it for free as part of the package if you buy the package deal. But even if you don't, you might want to have that in a physical form so you can mark it up and take notes and, uh, you know, take that exam before you do that. Now, as I mentioned, at the end of our call, uh, at the end of the live stream, we do a 30-minute coaching call. And tonight, we'll be drawing for a 30-minute coaching call on Thursday, January 26, 5 p.m. Jessica, our first winner, uh, completed her 30-minute call. And she wanted to talk about mutual funds. You can now find that coaching call in the playlist called Coaching Calls, the replays. Uh, our uh, last week's winner, Kyle, is going to talk about a study plan. So we'll get that done. We'll get it recorded, and that will go up in the coaching call list. So that coaching call is recorded, and it's shared in the coaching call uh, playlist. You can assign it. So if you're one of those victorious test takers and you're just joining us for morale boost for the other people, thank you so much. And you win. You're welcome to enter. You can assign that call to some uh, deserving person in your office, whoever you'd like to. And you can also share it. So if you uh, win and you want to have two or three people join you on that coaching call, uh, I'm fine with that. It needs to be claimed by email within one hour of the drawing. So I don't want to have a contingent liability that extends for weeks with somebody who wanted to draw and didn't claim their prize. So claim it. As soon as you claim it, you'll get a Zoom invite from me for January 26, 5 p.m. And, uh, you know, I'll show up and we'll talk about whatever you do. Uh, it is helpful if you can tell me a little bit before your, you know, your coaching call what it is you'd like to discuss. I mean, I'm ready to roll. But it would be nice if you send me an email and say, hey, Dean, here's what I want to do. Uh, Jessica's case, she wanted to talk about uh, NAV pop calculations, dollar cost averaging, and we kind of got that all done. All right, so let's go to the comments. Get on with the actual part of our call. Let me get rid of this. And let's get busy on some stuff. All right, Zelda, I got you. Zelda, thank you so much as a victorious test takers for... You know, I appreciate it. It's a good morale boost to Zelda. So she sent me a really nice uh, comment on the channel. And Zelda, I really appreciate that. It really uh, lifts my spirit some days. I mean, I have a you know pretty thick skin, but some days uh, it's nice to have somebody say, hey, Dean, thanks for all the free stuff. I'm joking. <laughs> but, <you know. laughs> so Zelda, kudos. Thank you for popping in. And thank you for that uh, nice note you left on the, uh, the channel. I appreciate it. Yeah, Zelda is, uh, you know, yeah, well, you know, like I say, pay it forward. So that's uh, Zelda paying it forward is showing up on the on the, on the the live stream and, you know, are posting a, a victory post in our Reddits where people can see. It's really good for morale, so I really do appreciate it. All right, Eli, I had no doubts you were going to slay the nine. I, I wasn't worried about you. Wasn't worried about you, so kudos. I love it. We had a lot of good, good uh, victories. More peas. Yeah. Adam's taking his seven. Cool. Cool. I like that beard, Adam. That's a good looking beard. It is. Yeah. Well, a 10 is kind of like, I don't know. It's a lot of, it's almost like the 24. Uh, it's a bigger beast for sure, um, Eli. So uh, it's a lot of judgment and a combination of judgment and minutia. Uh, what do you think, Brian? Exactly. It's a baby yeah. 24. Yeah. I think a baby 24 is what I would think of it as. Yeah. Thursday, RC. All right. Well, we're sending you good testing vibes for sure. Good testing vibes for sure. Get the P. Get the P. All right. Pass the SIE. Thanks to Brian. Now on to the 63 and the 6. Woo! -hoo. 
There you go. Boy, just peas flying all over the place. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to start. Way to exactly. Start. I love it. Oh, there's one of my favorites. Another one of my favorites, Erica. Erica works so hard. I mean, you know, she's dedicated. She's disciplined. She's organized. And uh, I was telling Brian, I what I like about Erica, and you know, I you know wish more people were like this. She she listens to uh, coaching. Like you know, if she sends me something, and you know, I don't mind helping anybody. But you know, if uh, I tell her don't worry about it, she's good at trying to put it away, even though I know it is tough tough to do. And moving on with stuff where she can get some more performance opportunities that will pay off for her. So. Definitely one of my favorites, Eric. I'm hoping you're going to win the coaching uh, call tonight. You're going to win eventually. So whether you win for your seven or you win for your 63 or your 65. Uh, well, the biggest thing, RC, is getting some sleep. Your reading <laughs> skills have got to be in top form. So you should be folding up your study effort sometime tomorrow and be doing some low-key stuff. So, uh, you know, if you want to review your notes, uh, keep it low-key. Read some questions, write answers. I talked about... Uh, Brian's PDF, just for others, RC, this wouldn't do do you very good. Uh, but what I tell people who do get Brian's uh, practice exam, just uh, in the morning, read the questions and the right answers. It is rationale because some of them are spot on. But not only that, it gets your brain kind of exactly. uh, thinking. And then I have a, a little video, RC, called the Series 7 in 60 Minutes. And if you haven't watched that, you can watch that tomorrow or you can watch that uh, Thursday morning. So just some little things like that. I mean... We don't know what you're scoring on your practice exams, but that would tell us, you know, what what you how good you should feel about uh, on Thursday. So hopefully you're in that 70 percent plus range. You're feeling good and you just got to stick the landing is what we're hoping. Uh, tape form. Wow. So on the 24, you have to implement that within 60, uh, 60 days of being told by FINRA. Let's see. I had a guy with tape form recording phone calls being recorded. Uh, it sounds more like a 24 thing, but uh, and then it's based on having reps that were in trouble, heightened supervision. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, options expire. That's a give me. So Zelda, I always tell people, you miss when options expire in your test. I always joke that you should uh, fail immediately. The screen should just <laughs> go off, go dark. Your seat should shoot you into the ceiling. You're mean. Can, how could you miss that? Now, Zelda, the only thing I would offer to add to that is I was tutoring somebody today. And uh, she was swearing to me that it's not 11.59. It's like, you know, 5.30. And so just be careful what you're being asked, like cease trading or exercise notices. The question is about expiration. So uh, for those of you who are joining us, by the way, that's on the SIE too. It's on the 9. It's 11.59 on the third uh, Friday uh, Eastern time. So make sure you got that. We don't have to explain the Saturday anymore, do we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're moving closer and closer to all these timelines. I know. And uh, same thing, Eli, if you're taking the 10, you know, please reach out before you, you know, you go off. We have a Reddit for nines and tens and 24s, and the rules change, and they change a little more often than the books. So I would tell you, your cubic is always more current than is the manual you're using. Yes, so you do. find a conflict between a question rationale like on a, this was a large position option reporting, not a big deal, except on nine and four. And uh, somebody said, oh, the Kaplan book said this and the Kaplan question said that. And I said, well, the Kaplan question is correct. That has been changed. We don't publish, you know, series four and nine books like every month. They come out very infrequently. So and spend the money. So the other my other pet peeve about that, Brian, is when I find out that they're using their friend's book. Yes. And so there's been like two editions since. So then it's on them, right? It's not on Kaplan. Confidence, Zelda, is so huge. Confidence is, I think, 10 points at least. 79, so. yes. Brian's a big believer, Zelda, and I am too, in the Kaplan Q Bank and its power of the performance tracker to help you figure out where you are lacking and do remediation before you go down there. It is one of the biggest things that distinguishes the Kaplan Q Bank. So you can Excellent. get a Kaplan Q Bank. Again, Excellent. I don't get commissions from Brian or from, from Kaplan. But with my 10% discount code, you can get a Kaplan QBank for 60 bucks. I think that's, I think it's a little less than that. That's a great, great investment. Uh, particularly if you're using some other QBank, uh, like STC, for example, good QBank, but it's possible you could exhaust it and then you're memorizing questions. And that can put you at risk if you're just going through it and go, oh, B, oh, A, B, 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 A, I remember the C. No, so uh, consider buying a Kaplan QBank as a supplement because that performance tracker is just uh, fantastic. Focus on the weak spots, Zelda remediation. People don't want to, you know, it's you got to embrace negative feedback. So right on, right. So you got to embrace the weak spots and say, hey, I got to, I got to do remediation on this. 
I, you know, I used to think remediation was a bad word or a negative word. It's not, you know, remediation means fixing whatever it is, you know, whatever it is that's giving you a problem, you know, fix it. Well, it'll be even easier for you, uh, Mark, to pass the 65 with that background. You know, Brian and I backstage sometimes talk about how difficult we think the 65 is for a tabla rasa, a blank slate, somebody who has no background. So I would say you have an easier uh, an easier challenge than others. And now how long people need to study is so independent. Uh, I usually tell people, so I'll, I'll see what Brian says. I usually tell people 80 to 100 hours. Some people can do it sooner. I had a guy who just took a week to do the SIE, but he had a background, kind of like you. So it depends. What do you think, Brian? How many do you have like an hour no, estimate? I, or? I, I don't narrow it down to hour, uh, hours yeah. as much as you do. I tell people four to six weeks. Okay, there you go. Well, yeah. I, you know, I'm going to do the that's divisor not. on that. So then I tell people, so Mark, what I tell people is, you know, the other thing that's great about Kaplan and every test prep vendor has this is a study calendar where you can actually put in your date and then it'll populate, Mark, you know, what you should be doing to, to make that uh, goal in terms of practice. But what I, I say is make the adjustments to your study plan as you go. So I would initially probably over budget what I think the time is. So Brian says 68 weeks. Dean says 80 to 100 hours. Let's call that three weeks. And then you would just say, OK, I'm going to initially budget for that. And then you can collapse it or expand it. Depending on, I do think you should have a test date. Uh, so I don't know if you have a test date, Mark. But if you don't have a test date, your brain doesn't you know work as well. So you want to get a test date. So I just talked to somebody today in the tutoring session, I said, when's your test date? And she said, I don't have one. I said, get one because you want to have one. So be, be again, Mark, be generous. If you think you need X number of times, put that date, you know, where it's not going to collapse on you too soon. But once you get the date, your brain will do better drawing you to it. And then what I suggest you do is have an activity list. So as a fake accountability partner, Mark, fake because I can't hire or fire, but you know, I used to, I can't uh, track you watching videos and reading the book. So what I used to tell my uh, new baby brokers is I'm going to track your how many questions you're doing. What is your daily discipline of practice questions? Because as a big brother, I can go in there and I can see that. So I would have a daily discipline of how many uh, practice questions I'm going to do, uh, how much reading I'm going to do, how much uh, videos I'm going to watch, whatever the case may be. And I would block that out in 45, 90 minute, what I call study blocks. So this uh, person today, I said, well, where are you going to get a study block? And you get one a day, two a day. Now she's working and has responsibilities and things she can do. So all she can carve out is a study block in the morning and then weekends. And don't try and carve out more than you can. In her case, it would be ridiculous for her to think she's going to do three study blocks, come back from work, and she's got the kids and her husband and everybody competing with her. So maybe another study block in the evening, that would be fine. But uh, make sure you you set a pace you can keep, Mark, so you don't burn out and you're on on pace, right? So slow and steady. Uh, Friday, I'm not sure what you're asking about utilities. You saw utilities, you didn't see the utilities. I'll just tell you what the test question is about utilities. They're defensive. Their products and services are resilient to the business cycle. That's very testable on SIE and uh, 65 and 7. Uh, they have a high level of debt on their balance sheet, so it's counterintuitive. But they're said to trade on equity because they have a small amount of equity, a large amount of debt. And that means they're interest rate sensitive. They're more interest rate sensitive than other investments. And they typically have a higher dividend and a higher dividend payout ratio. So anything you want to add to that, Brian? Nope. Defensive. Uh, that's number one. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's pretty straightforward. Well, you know, there's inputs and outputs. Brian's pretty good at this. So we have present value, future value. So you're going to need the time period. You're going to need the assumed interest rate. And then you got to figure out where you're going for present value or future value. Uh, well, practice during rehearse on getting the opposite. Uh, I would know the rule is 72. And then I would also know that the future value is usually for goal planning, right? So how much do I need in the future to fund a college education, for example? That's one of their favorites. And then present value is what do I need today to do that? And then the difference, I'm oversimplifying. I'll, I'll let Brian uh, correct me. But I think of the in between those two numbers, right, is what we call the internal rate of return. It could be fixed or not, depending on whether it's a bond or not. Anything you want to add to that, Brian? Man, you're right on top of it, Dean. Okay. But I, the easiest way to understand it, present value is my current investments, what I have in my IRA, what I have in my 401k. Future value is my future goal. I have $100,000 yeah. today to invest. I want a million dollars 
when I retire in 25 years. There's the time limit. What is the rate of return that's required to get me there? That's yeah, the so limit. most of the time on the test, just want to stress again, you 65, 66s. It's not can you do the math. Nope. It's do you recognize input and output. Yep. Right? So uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. And again, if you tell us, uh, I mean, I'll speak for myself instead of us, but uh, if you tell me you missed the 65, 66 because of a future value, present value calculation, I'm going to say, eh, you know, yeah. there's something else that did you in and that isn't it. Yeah. So Zelda, thank you. I have a, I'm very proud of my options playlist. Uh, I have tons and tons of options stuff for you. Again, it's a buffet. I don't expect you're going to sit there and watch, you know, 50 videos on options, but you can pick and choose. And one of the things that is in there is what Del Zelda is discussing is I have a hundred option practice exam. I have another uh, one that has uh, 30. And then Brian has one that he's uh, let us put on the channel that has 44. I think it's 44. And his are spot on too. So we have lots of uh, uh, great practice questions and options on the channel. So uh, it's a separate playlist. So if you're studying for Series 7, the Series 7 is the only thing on my YouTube channel that has six separate unique playlists. One of those playlists is options. And there's practice questions there. There's videos there. There's all kinds of goodies for you. How come, how come your guest stopped making videos? Brian, are you asking about Brian? He's working on it. He told me he's making some new ones. <laughs> I just recorded some YouTube videos. Woo! He was telling me what he's got. I think they're going to be popular. I'll post them on the channel to get him, get him to get people I've over there. i got to edit them. Dean has yeah, all the... I don't edit it. Yeah, I just plug and play. So Brian was surprised. Yeah. Because, How do you get so many of those videos up there? And I say, as I always tell people, one of my favorite sayings is, I don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. So I, you know, I hit play. I hit record. And I put it in my, my goal this year, uh, of Friday is to, is to try and learn some more editing techniques and that kind of stuff. But, and, you know, and one of the new ones I hope to post here in the next couple of weeks is exactly future value, present value and IRR. I'm told I'm looking forward to it because Brian is so good at uh, making the math simple. Yeah. So <laughs> I have very high expectations. I'm, <laughs> I'm not joking here. I had somebody taking the 24 who was struggling with buy-ins and closeouts. And Brian has some free stuff on YouTube, and I sent her the link to that. And oh my goodness, she would have think it was like a religious experience. She was like, "Oh, you know." So, so uh, there are expectations that have been set been set for sure. Uh, Vanguard give you QBank and all the materials. If you are a crew member of Vanguard, I can't imagine you don't get all the stuff. Yeah, Vanguard, I think uses Cap, and they did tell very recently if they have, and I think they still do. And so, yeah, if you're a Vanguard crew member or crew member in training. Uh, you know, you should have cap on materials. Uh, we support all test prep vendor materials. So if you have a practice question uh, and you send it to me, I explicate practice questions for folks. So, you know, uh, if you send it to me, uh, Erica sends me some. She's I don't know if she's got a cap on QBank now, but she's using Pass Perfect. I'm more than happy to help you on any question. That being said, it's easy if it's Kaplan because I can backstage see what you're looking at and pull it up by the QID number. But we'll help you on any any QBank you're using that you struggle with. And I told you, I feel kind of bad. I, this person paid for two hours of tutoring and basically wanted to go over hellacious, uh, it's in the tutoring replay list, hellacious past perfect margin questions that she's never going to see. I mean, it's her money. So, you know, I wish we would have spent that time and resources on other things, but, you know, oh well. I don't know how we do that in a live stream. <laughs> they arrange us for different things. Um uh, I don't know even how to be begin attacking that kind of I thing. So. Eight ranges. Yeah, I'm not sure what what you mean by ranges. So uh, the ranges are usually not dates; they're more about money, like 90 million versus 100 million versus 110 million, that kind of thing. I think you're going to get it, Eric. I, I can't fix the draw; it's random, but I think you're going to get it. You just you have the good energy for that. The problem now, Eric, if you win, everybody think, is going to think I actually did fix it. <laughs> There you go. Four for four. So what, let me guess. Six, uh, SIE, six, 6365. Is that the four for four? What do we call that? Quadrophenia? I call the, <laughs> the three a trifecta. So if a three is a trifecta or a hat trick. Four is a, I don't know what we call the four. Uh, it's a I, super uh, That's a super yeah, so, yeah. Uh I hail from San Francisco. And, you know, in San Francisco, people drink uh, quite a bit. And anyways, we had a place I used to hang out with. If you drank a hundred different beers, you got a mug, a 40 ounce mug that you could fill up free during happy hour. 
And, uh, you know, I'm obsessive. <laughs> so <laughs> my friend and I, we did it like, you know, more than once. And so my fourth muck was, I called it, I named it because I'll engrave it for you. I called it Quadrophenia. And so that was my fourth mug. It was hanging over the bar in a place of respect. And one time this young lady came in and she goes, I bet you're very proud of that. You know, really being sarcastic. And I said, I am. I said, you know, I never set a goal and met it. This is the first goal I ever set and met drinking a hundred different beers. I've done it four times. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, thank you so much. We love referrals. The channel uh, we're co coming up on a million, uh, 300,000 views, or maybe I'm over that already. Uh, I, I try to follow a model that's a little different. I call it don't be an asshole. So what I mean by don't be an asshole is I don't ask people to like the, the, the videos. I don't ask people to subscribe. I figure if we deliver value to you that, uh, you know, you'll give us some referrals and then you'll hit the like and then you'll hit the subscribe. So, you know, I do have hints. I, you know, I have a hint behind me. <laughs> so uh, we appreciate referrals. I think the two big things to our channel growing so quickly is uh, testing victories and referrals. So uh, I never had haters until I was on social media. And now, now I have some haters that I think I trick people into watching that channel. I'm like, how could I trick people to watch my channel? I have 300,000 watch hours. <laughs> you know, I don't how you trick would trick people to do that. Uh, I will be in the end of the month. I scored uh, STC and I just bought the Q-Bag. Scored 62. Any advice? Just keep grinding. That sounds like you're in the right spot. Performance um, tracker. Yeah. Performance you do have the performance tracker on the Q-Bag. I wouldn't worry about that 62. We'd like you to, Zena, be in the 70. And you have plenty of time to get there. But the reason I'm not concerned about that 62 is when you change vendors, just based on phraseology, yeah. you can be missing questions because you have a different you know, kind of reading rhythm with them. So I sure that'll naturally come up because of that. And then if you can keep that in the 70 range on Kaplan, I think you're in really, really good shape. So uh, no worries, no worries. So, Dean, if I may add just one more thing. Uh, I, as far as if you're evaluating scores, the customized quizzes are naturally going to be lower than the simulated exam scores on the QBank. Because you're drilling. Because you're picking your. You're, you're drawing a, a much larger population of questions with the customized quizzes. Okay. Well, the simulated is kind of a little bit more towards the actual okay. risk level. Okay. I, Zena, I don't think there's any, I, I, you know, again, when you're in chat, you know, just, you know, again, we want to be respectful of people's privacy. So you're under no obligations, you know, to tell what, what your score was on the first attempt. But if your score was in the high 60s, let's just assume it is. I don't want to put additional pressure on you, but most people were in that high 60 range. You know, they saw the dragon, they went in the cave and they didn't quite, you know, slay the dragon, but they know what it looks like. And they usually do go over the, the, the top. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some people who really struggle. I've had people get those high 60s, which are exasperating. Uh, I just had a guy today and I said, did you change your answers? And he said, yes, please don't do that. So uh, I consider high 60 scores to not be knowledge deficit. I consider that to be something, some variable like changing answers or, you know, whatever it happens to be. So I think you're in pretty good shape. We would like to see practice scores uh, higher than that. And I always, Zena, say, take Brian's Test Geek Series 7 practice final when you get towards the end and get a score because that score will correlate to your actual exam. So, you know, you do that, you get a 75, you can, you can feel good about going down there and testing. I had a guy uh, who got a 67 on a Friday testing Monday, and I said, well, good news, it's not Monday. So, you know, you need to do some work over the weekend. And he was able to pull it out. So, uh, <laughs> I think we answered that one. I think we answered Brian's making videos. Front running Amy is trading ahead of customers. So, you know, uh, on the SIE, front running, I guess, I guess we could ask you that. So, you know, I have a big customer. Let's say uh, Fidelity is my customer, I wish. And uh, Fidelity, I know, is building this position in the stock. And I know that this is going to be billions of dollars coming into that stock. And if there's more demand than supply for that stock, I know that that stock is going to go up. And so front running would be when I say, well, you know, before I buy some more for Fidelity, why don't I just take out an order ticket here and buy some for Dean? <laughs> and so that's trading ahead of customers. So that's a big, big, big no-no. Let me write that down in our timestamp so that we can tell people where that's at because that's a, a good one. This is uh, 2936. So I like to link on these good questions like this. So front running, it's trading ahead of customers, big no-no. I always think of it, Amy, as, uh, you know, it drives me nuts. Like when I go into Starbucks something 
and the barista is making their own latte before they make a mine. I said, well, wait, you're supposed to take care of the customer first. Now, marking the close is, again, these are pretty high-end questions for SIE. So I don't know if you're using Pass Perfect or who you're using. But, you know, uh, I uh, call my broker and I say, hey, I always like to leave, uh, leave the in the trading session on a good good feel, good vibes. So I want you to uh, do the last trade on, a, on an uptick. So if the last trade is 59. I want you to run a trade at 5901 to generate or manufacture what is called an uptick. That might help me establish a short position in the morning. But marking the close is doing a trade that is fictitious. It only serves the purpose of, you know, doing what it says, marking the close. Primarily make, marking the close means causing an uptick, creating my own uptick. It'd be the same in the opening. I say, hey, you know, do the first trade at, uh, the, it opens at 59, do one at 5901. So that's what's marking the close is. Again, fraudulent device. Interposition, you got to be a little more careful about this one. <sighs> Inter yeah, I, I, Brian's with me. He's thinking this is not SIE test material. This is more 24. Uh, Eli, if you're still on the call, call this is 10, definitely 10 <laughs> stuff. Yeah. So interpositioning is putting a third party into the trade. So, Amy, you got to be a little careful on this one because this may or may not be fraudulent depending on whether I get a better execution. Right. So, for example, you know, my brother wanted to buy a uh, blue face Submariner Rolex. And I said, why don't you send Lewis to do that for you? Send him down to the jewelry store. He goes, my brother said, well, why would I send him down there and send me going down there? I said, because Lewis buys lots of watches from this guy and he's going to sit down there all day long and get that guy to come down on the price. You and I, Chris, have no patience for that. We're going to go in there and use a market order and you're going to pay big bucks for it. Anyways, when my brother got the Rolex, he said, did I buy that from the jeweler or did I buy that from uh, Lewis? I said, I'm not sure. I mean, who knows? Lewis could have bought it and marked it up to you. I don't know. You're in a better position though. Now, interpositioning, if there's a superior execution, now let me put it in the securities industry. I call Brian. Uh, Brian is a, a investor doing business with Goldman Sachs. He's a good customer of Goldman Sachs. And I see Goldman Sachs as a market maker. And I call Brian. I say, hey, Brian, if I call Goldman Sachs, they say, Dean who? But, you know, Brian, if you call Goldman Sachs, I think they'd give you a much better price. So, you know, will you call Goldman Sachs for me and get me a quote? So in that example, right, I'm putting Brian into this trade. It's putting a third party into the trade. But in this case, I might end up with superior execution. So that would be perfectly legit. So two takeaways. Interpositioning is putting a third party into the trade. Test question, it may or may not be fraudulent. Let's so give you a fraudulent device now. Uh, I put uh, Brian into the trade. I say, Brian, uh, I'm going to mark it up to you 20%. And then you mark it up to your customer 5%. And if FINRA says, did I charge a customer more than 5%, I can say no, because Brian is a market maker. No, FINRA, I did not charge a customer more than 5%. And then they asked Brian, did you charge a customer more than 5%? He goes, nope, I charged 5%. And then we split, this is a bad word, the hidden profit. Anytime you hear the phraseology on the exam, hidden profit, that's going to be bad, right? So if this third party is in there to justify a higher markup, then there's going to be, be a problem. I'd be awful surprised, Amy, if this shows up on your actual SIE exam. Eli, this will show up on your 10. If we have any 24s joining it, so it will show up on that the 24s. Anything you want to add to that, Brian? Uh, I have heard marking the close on the SIE. Oh, there you go. Okay. Inner positioning, no way. Okay, no way. So no way. <laughs> I'll stake my reputation to it. No oh, way. Oh, there you go. There you go. I love it. I love that we will to do that. So. Um, well, yeah, his, he, he, he does videos. That's a good point. So Brian, somebody's asking about Brian's videos behind his paywall at Teachable. He has hundreds of videos. So remember he has video courses. So whoever was asking about Brian not making free YouTube videos, we want to remind you that his paid supplement is a video course. So it's a little different than Dean in that regard. So thank you Zelda for reminding us that, uh, we were maybe not misunderstanding the person's point about Brian's videos there. How many Daily hours of video do you have at Teachable? I am a paid supplement. So there you go. How many uh, hours of uh, videos do you have there at Teachable? Is it tens or hundreds of hours? How many hours total? At Teachable? Yeah. Isn't that your platform for your videos? Uh, uh, test, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, well, I, it, you know, it, it simulates a live class. So series okay. seven is three and a half days, 65. Okay, there you go. Days. So, you know. So it's basically a, a I mean, video on the hand. There you go. There you go. So thanks, Zelda. 
Uh, trading ahead. Eh. Uh, Red M, again, Amy, I don't know who you're wow. using for your SIE study wow. materials. Uh, I went over Reg M uh, last week. So go back to last week's playlist. Look at the timestamps and you'll see me go over all of Reg M for a 24 candidate, Amy, not an SIE candidate. Uh, trading ahead, it usually is in the context, again, I don't know who your SIE provider is, but it's usually in the context of trading ahead of a research report. And when can an analyst actually buy or sell securities? Again, I'm really suspect, Amy, of your, your test prep vendor if they're if they're making you do this kind of stuff for an SIE. So if I close um, my eyes, I'd swear she's doing a series 24. Yeah. So Amy, you know, really consider maybe, maybe Amy, consider getting a supplement just to confirm what are test issues on the SIE versus your test prep vendor taking you into the uh into the weeds. Well, past perfect is very, very difficult. So this tells you congrats, you passed. Wow. You <laughs> well, got a 62. Congrats. <laughs> well, so past perfect, I told you, is very difficult. So maybe maybe their backstage metrics say that if you can pull a 60 on a past perfect, that you're you're that's good right. to go. So maybe We're that's ready on a scale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know tips in general, just keep grinding. I would like to see, and whenever you ask for tips. I always want to see a mark to market. What I mean by that is I'd like to know a score on a practice final. So I don't know if you have reason to be nervous or not, because we don't know based on your, your thing here, where you're at right now. Right. So if you haven't done a practice exam, I do one. If you have done a practice exam, we'd be looking for a score. And without that, I don't know what pointers we can add because we don't know what you're presently doing. So uh, I will link at uh, 3646. Uh, Brian has a free video on a study plan and executing a study plan. And I'll put that in the uh, the replay for you. You can check that out and see, you know, what you're doing if it matches up with, with what Brian is recommending. Any recommendations? Well, I would tell you, make sure you print the PDF. So, Amy, for you, for sure, Amy, print the PDF of the content outline from FINRA. The SIE content outline. It tells you the four areas you're going to be tested on the SIE. And I would use that as an intellectual inventory as you're stu studying. So that I would definitely print that out. I have explicated it in my SIE practice exam, or my uh, playlist, where I actually go through it point by point and tell you what the test questions are. So that would be my advice for both you and Amy. Print that SE SIE PDF. It's called the FINRA SIE Content Outline. Print it look at it and see what makes it now amy for you you can use it say do i see interpositioning here anywhere and if you don't then don't worry about it so when people ask brian and i how do you know that's not on the test i said well they're not allowed to randomly make up things to test you on they're only allowed to test you within the four corners of that document so if it's in that document it's they can test you on it if it's not in that document they're not allowed to test you on it so please print that i'd say the same for the series seven Print that content outline. Have it as one of your things while you're studying next to you so you can kind of look at it and say, oh, yeah, here it is on the content outline. So, uh, again, Amy, Reg M, I, I would be, I'm not willing as Brian to stake his entire reputation as he did, but I'd be awful surprised if in the content outline there's anything on Reg M and the SIE content outline. Where I think that happens is people, so this is a conscious decision, by the way. So I've tried on the channels a lot of work, but I, I try not to have, a playlist that is for everything, you know? So a lot of test prep vendors have a the content and then instead of structuring that content to that particular exam, they just slice it and dice it. So they're grabbing a section here grabbing a section there. And they, they end up with a, an SIE book that maybe covers reg M instead of having a document or a book that is actually just for the SIE. So that's my thoughts on it on my channel. That's why it's organized by playlists. I really give thought about whether I put something on the playlist or not, or make a separate video for a separate playlist. Don't get me wrong. I, I have like an equity lecture that I, is in the playlist for the SIE and the seven. But in general, you know, make sure you got the, the content right. Uh, 57. Well, Ben, I have a 57 playlist. Uh, you need to really have an understanding of the bid and the ask and whose perspective. Uh, I don't know, Ben, when you're testing. Let me uh, put up my email address. I'm not making you any kind of a promise, Ben. So let's just be clear. I am going to try. 
Uh, but if you tell me when your test date is, I'll try and put up a 57 practice final. I've been meaning to do that. So, uh, you know, if you, you know, if you're not testing in the next, you know, week, maybe a week or so, I'll try and get that up for you. Um, uh, it, whoa, what happened here? Okay, so uh, let me see what happened to my friend Ben. So make sure you know locked and cross markets. Make sure you know limit order protection. Uh, make sure you know you know level one, level two, level three. Uh, I have some the videos I have been in that playlist are pretty good for the fifty seven. Uh, I had one guy made a comment said it was the best content he'd found anywhere, free or not. Uh, do you have any comments on the fifty seven, Brian? No. Okay. So Ben, just uh, send me that email. Tell me when you're testing, and at least I'll try and get you a practice final, uh, Kaplan fifty seven practice final. Explicate. I don't know if you've seen me explicate practice finals on some of your previous exams, uh, but I'll try and get that up there for you. The other problem is, you know, we only, you know, it only gets one view. So <laughs> it'll be Ben. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> one view. One view. One view. Hey, but one view is important if they make it. It is. It really is. Hey, yeah. Stephen, our advice is get off the call and get some sleep. So I hope you're not on the East Coast. <laughs> so, uh, Last minute, just be confident in your study plan that you've executed it properly. Be confident in yourself. And most, most important, Stephen, be confident in your answers. You know, tomorrow, man, go down there and don't get wobbly. Don't change answers. You know, don't get wobbly. Uh, if we're going to buy a tutoring session, how many days ahead should you book it? It's all automated, Mary. So you go to deantennytutoring.setmore.com. And it does, how many days ahead of the test should you book? Well, I was just telling Brian before we got on the call, Mary, I had a guy taking his nine who booked tutoring Sunday night, testing Monday morning. Please don't do that. I mean, I'm not, you know, we, we did the hour he passed, but uh, I would say make your Dean to-do list. And then when you get your Dean to-do list together, give yourself enough time for remediation after the tutoring session. So I wouldn't want you to, to book a tutoring session. I'd like to give you at least three or four days after the tutoring session to kind of absorb whatever we discussed and implement it. So that's what I would tell you. And then you just, like I say, it's automated booking. You just go there and you, you know, you hit the button. Uh, you know, I've automated as much as possible. I had somebody, Brian, I've been square. I use square to process payments. I've been doing that for, I used to do for privately, not publicly. And I've been doing that six years, never had anybody dispute a charge ever. And I get a thing from square saying, and they're not going to withhold the funds because I have a, such a strong history on square, but the person said they didn't recognize the charge. I said, it's impossible because they're the ones who create the charge when they hit the button. I don't, <laughs> I don't create any charges to anybody. So, so Mary, uh, three, four days before your your test, or sooner. I just tutored somebody today that doesn't have a test date. So it depends. You know, I I just put out a little video to update the channel based on how it's evolved, and part of that is tutoring. And I would think of tutoring as plugging any gaps you have. So you know, I'm a big believer in using all the other resources you have first. Your your courses, your manuals, your practice questions, your paid supplement, perhaps your free supplement. And then at that point, if you still feel like you need to plug the gap, then I would consider tutoring for that. And so, yeah, Brian and I are both available uh, for that tutoring, but I, I don't solicit. I had a guy take it as nine and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed financially, so I don't need to tutor people. So I'm, I don't know how to tactfully sell, tell people I'm not going to try and close you on tutoring. So I'm not going to be interchanging five emails about why I'm a better tutor than this guy or, you know, so if you think you need it, it's available. And uh, that's how you go about uh, booking it. Oh, that's fantastic. Like here, that is fantastic. You should feel very, very confident, very confident. So you just need to stick the landing, just stick the landing. Yeah, I, the FINRA SIE exam is a good point. I think it's an excellent exam. Some people don't like it. I don't know why I like it. Uh, save it. So don't don't memorize it. But if you haven't done it already and you're taking the SIE, save it as one of those last ones. You know, Brian's SIE exam, the FINRA SIE exam, save those as your kind of a last intellectual inventory, so to speak. Uh, do you I like it? I always recommend FINRA's SIE exam. Yeah. Yeah, it's why free. It's good. Exam, uh, a practice exam from someone who's actually writing the exam. Yes. So I hear people knocking all the time. I go, I don't get it. I I actually, Zelda, did a, uh, a doppelganger version of it. So what I've done, Zelda, is I've done two things. I explicated. You can watch me take that exam and talk about it. But then I wrote an exam with the same answer set, but different questions. So in other words, it's the same answer sets on that exam, but different questions. So that's two uh, for one you can get on that one. 
I'm a big believer in questions. So Zelda, just theologically, Brian and I believe in doing lots of questions. So, you know, one of the first things I say to people as an accountability partner is what was your QBank usage? You know, people tell me they missed the mark and I'll ask, what was your QBank usage? So I did 10% of the questions. I'm like, that's not enough. <laughs> so, And that drives me nuts, Zelda, Brian. That then some people will post in social media how I didn't read the book and I didn't do any practice exams and I'm just a genius and I went down there. I know what the big deal is. This guy, Brian, I almost got into it with him, but I didn't. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Uh, but he said that anybody who needs tutoring, I can't believe he said this, uh, shouldn't be managing other people's money. Wow. And I was wanted to say, and anybody who makes wow. a post like that should not be managing other people's money. Yeah. And then I was going to share with him all the billionaires that I have tutored yeah. and say, listen, you clown, these guys have billions of dollars. And if they can find somebody that can help them be more efficient, that's the other use of tutoring is making your life a little more efficient about what you should be spending time on. So you're going to think that those guys don't need tutoring. I mean, Ugh. I try not to delete people's comments, but, you know, I didn't delete his comment either, but I was tempted. All right, CL. I still haven't got that completely down. I, I'm now 50-50 saying greetings and salutations. I'm still stuck on my greetings, but I told you I am now saying greetings and salutations. I think more often than not in my new videos. <laughs> um, I don't think you're going to have to do straight line depreciation uh, as a test question. I would know it's a non-cash expense. Um, I think the thing you're going to have to do in terms of amortization, maybe 50% probability, is adjusting a muni bond at a premium. But other than that, uh, I think it's mainly aim and shoot, point and click. Would you say that, I Brian? do both on my video. I do both the amortization and the... Uh, okay. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, not the depreciation. I'm sorry. Okay. I was thinking yeah. accretion. Yeah, I don't do straight line depreciation. You're right. It's a cost. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, uh, I don't think it's a big deal. Um I would think, so let me try and explain your, your, your point about how to understand it. As a business person, I don't think you get to use assets for free. So I have a warped perception of my business if I'm, oh, I don't know, let's say I have a lawn care business. And so I'm doing my profit or loss at the end of the year, and I'm not taking into account the usage of those assets because sooner or later I'm going to have to replace them. And so depreciation is the charge to the asset for its useful life. So then I have uh, the money or resources to replace and get a new pickup truck or a new lawn mowing machine, whatever the case may be. However, it is a non-cash expense. So that means Dean's Lawn Care could actually have a loss for this year, pay no taxes, even though I had money in the bank. And now the real money is called cash flow. So I have a video on partnerships. I would suggest you, uh, maybe if you're that interested, you can, you can watch that. And I do go over not so much how to do the depreciation, but how it shows up in terms of a flow through from a partnership. And then I would know, again, if it doesn't have a useful life, you can't depreciate it, right? So raw land, for example, does not have a useful life. And then the amortization, the only amortization you're going to have to do is going to be amortization downward on mini bonded premium. Other than that, it's upward, and you just got to recognize it needs to be done on like a zero coupon bond or an OID. So That's what I was thinking of. Okay, there you go. So. Uh, the free coaching call, Angel, the way we do it is the end of the call. We're coming up. Uh, I'm going to put a word into the chat, and then you guys put that same word in the chat, and then I have this uh, thing that spins around, and it uh, brings up whoever wins. So I haven't uh, – last week you used Test Geek. I think the week before that we did coaching call. So uh, give some thought to what our, our word that goes into the chat will be for the uh, drawing. The drawing is coming up at the end of our time together. And just again, I'm trying to make sure everybody understands the drawing – and how it works. So, Angel, I don't know if you joined us a little late, but uh, whoop, uh, Mary, just a sec here. Let me get Mary uh, uniform practice code, a highlight of that. It standardizes practices within the securities industry, right? So, you know, you, if everybody's doing things differently, it would be a mess. Uh, let me timestamp this. This is 4904 UPC, and I'll post a little something for you. Anyways, that's all the, the questions here about T plus one, T plus two, Settlement. Uh, the rules of good delivery, delivery. Uh, the X date. Uh, it's not a high as risk as investment vehicles. Um, so I'm not sure, Mary, what kind of a highlight you'd like me to do in a live stream. But uh, make sure you know uh, the rules of good delivery for settlement is T plus one for gubbies and option contracts, T plus uh, two for corporates and munis. I would know the X date is one business day prior to the record. That's part of the Uniform Practice Code. 
Uh, I would know it's the first date on which the stock no longer trades with the dividend attached. I would know that in accrued interest calculations for corporates and munis, the Uniform Practice Code uses 30-day months, and it's paid by the buyer to the seller. I would know that's part of that. Uh, I would know that on the Uniform Practice Code, signatures have to be technically correct. I would know that they have to be guaranteed with a medallion stamp. Um, I think that's about it. Did I miss anything, Brian, on Uniform Practice Code? No, that's it. Settlement and delivery is the biggest yeah, thing. That's it. Yeah, I mean. And the X dates and record dates. But by the way, that should be, so I don't want to give you a hard time, but that should be something that uh, you, you know, those are called recognition style questions, Mary. So, what you know, the three styles of questions you get are recognition, practical application, and judgment. And so on the SIE, if you're an SIE test taker, it's mostly recognition. There is some practical application. I can't think of any judgment questions on the SIE. I mean, it's mainly pretty straightforward, I think. There, there's a couple suitability. Yeah, there, suitability there. is always judgment. Yeah. And then on the uh, the seven, uh, you get more judgment questions. You know, about 10% of that are judgment questions. Brian brought up suitability, right? That's a judgment question where you get to a 50-50. So almost all the Uniform Practice Code questions are recognition, flashcard stuff. And you don't want to give up flashcard stuff, you know. There you go. I like it. That's a good good plan. I like it. So let's see what your scores are in the practice files. I would just warn you. So please don't get Dean in trouble. I don't need any more social media fights. The only thing I would tell you that I don't like about Achievable is I don't, I'm not comfortable with their correlation to the actual exam of their, their practice files. So, you know, I had a young lady, she was uh, upset because she wasn't doing well on Kaplan. She bought the Achievable. Her score skyrocketed. And I said, well, that's not necessarily a good thing. I mean, let's not get too carried away here. I could not talk her to going back to Kaplan. And I said, well, do me a favor, you know, take the Test Geek final. Because the Test Geek finals, I told you, has correlation. And she dropped from, you know, an 85 on the achievable to like a 67 on Brian's. And unfortunately, on Monday, she got a 67. So that would be the only warning I would give you is, you know, pass perfect. I feel comfortable you're going to get a higher score than what you'd get on pass perfect. So... Bueno, if Friday uh, you're getting a 70% on a pass perfect, what did somebody tell us that 60? Was that you that told us 60% even pass perfect considers passing? <laughs> so love it. Love it, Steven. You should be good. Should be good. So I don't think you're at risk. Don't think you're at risk. Yeah, Vanguard uses Kaplan. Yeah, Brian offers private tour to out of curiosity. He's $90 an hour. It's a great deal. Let me give you uh, Brian's contact information here. So let me go back and get that for you. So I think Angel up. might know it. What's that? I think Angel might know my. Uh, my oh, is he? Uh, is he just? I think I, I think I wrote him today. Oh, okay, okay. Well, there I you think, go. Oh. I think there's Brian's email. For, I see a lot of names. I, I, it's embarrassing, Brian. I get it. I know. Listen, I am just so you know, I'm putting giving you my apology right now. I have never had a problem, and I'm not a flake, but. In my automated booking page, I have like a half a dozen Michaels. And so the, the guy who I thought was Sunday night was a different Michael when he was doing the nine the day before. And this other Michael, I thought, well, finally, this guy is claiming his tutoring session because I do let you reschedule. I don't refund. And I thought it was him. And, uh, you know, I had to apologize profusely. I said, Alyssa, I know this sounds a little stupid, but I just I got to change my booking page to give me your last name first. So, you know, it's embarrassing, but it happens. No. So. Okay, let's see. We're coming close to the drawing. First and second tries on the finals. Oof. You just got to keep, uh, Drake, you got to keep working. You know, 65 twice. So, you know, I would maybe consider getting a new vendor or at least a new QBank just so you can get some different questions to look at and see how you do on that. So, you know, that's one thing I would say. Look at the four content areas. There you go. Out. Content Which outline. Is the lowest. There's your line, biggest two. Outline. Okay, we're coming down. I don't. I think we're trying to get to everybody. We may not get to everybody. Uh, I would be worry doesn't do you any good, so I wouldn't worry at all. Yeah. Worry is not a good healthy thing. So be confident. Uh, yeah, don't run out of time. That's you need to practice when you're doing your practice test. Time yourself so you know how long that takes. Yeah, there you go. Analysis. Don't stay up too late. <laughs> yeah, you're getting when you can't find most. I like that, David. <laughs> uh, 
There you go. I Brian Supplement. Brian is on the Uniform Securities Act stuff. Brian is, you know, he's 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 good on everything, but he puts that in such plain English. I attempt to, and I can't I can't do it. I you know. Uh, retention, the vast majority, Nikisa or Nikesa, I'm hoping I pronounce that right. If I'm not, I apologize. The vast majority of brokerage firm records are three years. Complaints are four, and then lifetime records would be spam. Stock certificates, ownership of the firm, partnership agreement. Articles of incorporation, minutes of the board meetings, six years would be items of original entry, the blotters, uh, the customer account statements, that kind of stuff. I would suggest learn lifetime and six, which is very few, and then everything else is three. That's how I'd organize in my mind, with the exception of customer complaints and money laundering. Money laundering records are five. Yeah, I don't know, Amy. I, I listen. I both Brian and I agree that is stuff that we just don't think you're going to see on the SIE. I think Brian did say he did have people see one of those. Market it close. Yeah. Yeah, you. I like that. It's always been. Uh, I have it in the context of trading securities orders. So I have a video where I show you where a technical analyst would place a buy stop above resistance, sell stop below support, and I show you a head and shoulders pattern. And I show you the odd lot trading theory. So, yes, it's in uh, types of orders is where you'd find that. Uh, tutor session. Thanks for the tutor session on 63. There you go. Love it. I did. I don't usually get to tutoring assignments for 63, but it helps you pass. That's what we need to do, right? So, love that. You're welcome, Nick. You're welcome. There's a lot of them. Okay. So, are we ready for the drawing? Uh, I use Zoom. Yeah, my tutoring is done over Zoom. I have a commercial Zoom account. You win the coaching call, yeah. you will also uh, get a Zoom invitation. So that's how I do it. I don't know. How, Brian, do you do Zoom? How do you? I do it? Zoom. Yeah. Hey, Thomas, thanks for the super chat. We appreciate it. Okay. So I think we're pretty much ready for our drawing. Let me just see if I missed anybody. Um, using STC for the TE provided. You know, well, I don't know. I, I this is probably not what you want to hear, Amy, but you don't need to get into the 80s. You know? <laughs> a perfect score is 72, right? <laughs> so uh the, the days of you know getting A's and B's are over. You just gotta, you know, you just gotta do it. So okay, there we go. I think we're ready for our, our drawing. Let me just go back and explain the drawing one more. A super chat is where like a fan can actually you can hit the super chat, like he just sent me two dollars on super. I think it was two dollars. There we go. So Thomas, I don't know if you guys see that, but Thomas, it's called a super chat. And so he put, uh, uh, do that. I'll tell you what, uh, Thomas, uh, what I, I haven't done it because I'm not here to make money off our live stream, but I was going to say something like, and if you want to go to the top of the queue, just do a super chat and poof, you know, <laughs> we'll be all over it. Okay. So let's tell you one more time about the drawing. So we're getting ready for our drawing. The drawing is for a 30 minute coaching call. I only call it a coaching call. Because if I called it tutoring, people would be confused. And I don't want people confused. I don't, there's no 30 minute blocks of tutoring. So that's why we call it coaching call. If you want to use it for tutoring, you want to do whatever you want to do with it, that's fine with me. The uh, It'll be a Zoom invitation to the winner on January 26th for 5 p.m. Pacific time. The uh, call is recorded and it's shared in the coaching call playlist. You get an example, you can see Jessica's uh, on mutual funds. As I said, you could assign it to someone else. So if you're a victorious test taker and you don't need it, you can assign it to whoever you'd like. Uh, you need to claim it uh, by email within one hour of the drawing, which we're about to do. So let me get out the giveaway tool. Whoop. Drum roll, please. Yeah, let's get it up there first. We've got to pick a word. And so uh, anybody, let's go back to the chat. Anybody have a word they uh, we want to put in here for the drawing? Let's. Um, uh, how about uh, pass? Get the P. We'll put the, get the P. Uh, remember, you got to do this how I'm gonna. It'll show up on here. So it's got to be exactly how you see it, or it won't. It won't uh, do that. So get the P. Let me bring it over now, and so you can see it. Yeah. Pass would be another one, yeah. You want to do pass? It's too late. We already put it in there. Yeah. Get the P. Get the P. Okay. Can you guys, uh, can you see that? 
All one word. Get the P. Uh, big hit, B man, that doesn't work. You guys are uh, not doing it correctly. Can't have any spaces. So get the P. You have to leave yeah, no spaces. Go. There it is. So now we got some people getting it right. Let me get rid of the, oh, I leave the 30-minute coaching bubble up there. All right, so we're up to 15. Anybody else want to participate? We're up to uh, 18 drawings, 20. Anybody else? 21, 23. I bet there's probably some people, Brian, they have their clock set for like 6.30. <laughs> and then they come on the call and put in their... <laughs> <Get to me. laughs> I believe in human depravity and original sin. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, 25. We're up to 25. So any more? 26. Last call. Okay. So uh, this is your last call. Okay. Here comes the drawing. So I'm about to hit the button. So here we go. Here we go. And the winner is. Come on, Erica. Oh, Erica, I just saw you go by. Jorge. Raphael, oh, Raphael is the there you go. Man, I like your profile pic, Raphael. You look like this isn't your first uh, social media rodeo. Yeah. Okay, so Raphael, let's uh, get your uh, email to me. Let me get, get rid of this now. So let me get rid of this. And let me get rid of the share of the screen. Back to Brian and Dean. And let me give you my email to collect. Get the P. There you go. So, uh, Raphael, send me the email, uh, deantinney at gmail.com, and then I'll respond with a Zoom invite. I'll probably get it to you tomorrow morning for that uh, Thursday, 5 p.m. And, uh, again, if you uh, tell me what you want to cover, that's fine. It'd be helpful. You don't have to do that. But, uh, you know, uh, you can you can not do that if you want. All right. So, check chat one more time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you next Tuesday. 5.30 p.m. Pacific time for another edition of our live stream. Thank you so much for your participation. And remember, I'll put the replay in the list, and I'll have a timestamp with those things I told you about. Probably not tonight. Maybe tomorrow morning I'll get it timestamped and, you know, processed properly. Okay, Brian, anything else? Oh, don't forget, inch by inch, your test is a cinch. Brian? You take the test. Don't let the test take you. <laughs> All right, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.